Welcome all to this new session, which is going to be dedicated for section 17.4, Equations of Motion, Rotation About Fixed Axis. So we have only one objective, which is to study the kinetic of rigid bodies undergoing rotational motion. So if we assume that we have this rigid body shown here, which is pinned at point O, and there are several forces and moments applied on it. Then we know that the body will move, but its movement is going to be rotational because it is pinned at point O. And for that, we will definitely use the normal tangential coordinate. And we can write down the equations of motion such that the summation of the forces along the normal direction is equal to the mass by the acceleration of the center of mass along the normal direction, which is equal to the mass multiplied by omega square r g. So here, the omega square r g is basically the normal acceleration of the center of gravity. Uh, the tangential forces, we sum them again, uh, like the normal component. So this is going to be M A G tangential, which is equal to M alpha R G. So similar to the normal uh, acceleration, the tangential acceleration is alpha R. Now, the last equation that we are going to add is the one which is uh, summing the moment about the center of mass, which is equal to I G alpha. Now, let's try to use the kinetic moment. And for that, we would need the kinetic diagram. Remember that this is the free body diagram. So I'm just roughly going to draw the rigid body and let's assume that this is point O this is G and we will have I G alpha and we will have M A G normal and M A G tangential and the distance from here all the way to there is RG. Now, uh, if we write down the kinetic moment equation, then we will have the sum of all moment about O, which is equal to the sum of all kinetic moment about O. Now, what are the kinetic moment? If you look carefully, this MGN is passing through O, so it will never cause a moment, but the, the tangential acceleration by the mass will cause a moment as well as the IG alpha. So we will end up uh, on the right hand side on having IG alpha plus RG and then M multiplied by IG and this is the tangential acceleration. Of course, I am assuming here that counterclockwise is positive, so don't forget that. Now, and just to remind you that this is the moment. So this is the MAG tangential multiplied by the arm, which is RG. Now, I can do some, some simplification here. So I can have this one as IG alpha plus r g m multiplied by r g alpha as you see r g alpha is the tangential acceleration now i can simplify this further and i will have i g alpha plus m multiplied by r g square alpha now i think you can recognize that this is the parallel axis theorem and indeed this one 
is actually I O multiplied by alpha. So if you can um, recognize this, what we are saying here is that the sum of all moment about point O, if that O is the center of rotation, is simply the moment of inertia I O multiplied by alpha. So here, let me quickly summarize what we did. So we said that the sum of all forces along the normal is equal to m omega square r g and the sum of all tangential forces equal to m r g alpha. Also, we said that the sum of all moment about the center of rotation O is equal to I G alpha plus R G M A G tangential, which is equal to I O alpha. Also, you might sum the moment about the center of mass, which is going to be I G alpha. Now, what you should remember here is that the difference here between IO and IG is that if the rigid body has a standard geometry, you can find IG from the table. If, if, if it is not standard, then you might need to, for example, use a composite idea, like you compose the body into different simple bodies and then do the parallel axis theorem, so depending on the geometry that you have. Now, in many situations with rigid body, we have a pin connection in which the body rotates at or uh, sometimes it's two bodies connected together. And the question is, if you have pin connection, you know that you will have reaction. So should you use X and Y, which is horizontal vertical reactions, or should you use normal tangential reactions? Now, the guideline on which reaction should you use, horizontal, vertical, or normal and tangential, is that if the G, the center of mass, and O, which is the center of rotation, are the same, then use horizontal and vertical, which means for this problem where we have a disk which is rotating about point O, since the rotation is happening about point O, and we can clearly see by inspection that this is the center of the gravity, then we know that we should use both uh, a horizontal and vertical. So the reaction would be OX and OY. On the other hand, if we have a situation where the center of gravity and the center of rotation are not the same, then the guideline says that you should use normal and tangential uh, reactions. And if you look at this example, the center of rotation is O. But as you see, this rod is pinned at a distance of 0.3 from this edge and a distance of 0.6 from this edge. So the pin is not acting on the middle. And we can, by inspection, anticipate that the center of gravity lying somewhere here. And as the guideline suggests, we should use normal and tangential. So this is what we are going to have. We will have OT as the tangential and ON as the normal reaction. So let's have the first example here. The drum shown has a mass of 60 kilogram and a radius of gyration KO about 0.0 of 0.25 meter. A cord of a negligible mass is wrapped around the periphery of the drum and attached to the block having a mass of 20 kilograms. So this block has a 20 kilogram of mass. If the block is released, determine the drum's angular acceleration. Now to start with the solution, let me show you here the free body diagram of the both the drum and the mass. So the drum has center of mass and the center of rotation at O. So we use X and Y component. And this is why we have the reaction as OX, OY. 
we have its weight acting downward and the tension from the cord. For the mass, we have the cord acting upward and its weight acting downward. Now, we will start by calculating the moment of inertia about O. And as the radius of gyration was given to us, then we can calculate I by multiplying the mass by the radius of gyration squared. So this is 60 multiplied by 0.25 squared, which is going to give you 3.75 kilogram meter squared. Now we can sum up the moment, taking clock, counterclockwise as positive, about 0.0. And since it is the center of rotation, as we explained before, this is equal to IO alpha. So the only force that, it, that, that is causing a, a, a moment is the tension at a distance of 0.4. So this is going to be tension multiplied by 0.4 which is equal to I, I is 3.75 alpha. Also, I can sum up the forces along the Y taking upward as positive. This is supposed to be equal to the mass by AGY. Now, for this, I have minus 20 multiplied by 9.81 and plus the tension which is equal to minus 20 the mass by the acceleration now let me show you what we did here so basically we sum up the forces along the y direction for the mass and you should consider here the fact that we are dealing with the system which is both the mass and the wheel together. And this is why we have here the equation as uh, minus 20, which is the weight acting downward, multiplied by 9.81 uh, plus 20, which is the uh, plus the tension upward, which is equal to minus 20a. The reason why we put minus on the acceleration side is that we know that the weight is going downward so we need to put the sign now we need also another equation and that equation we can uh, obtain obtain it from the uh, the fact that this point right here has the tangential acceleration from the point of the the disk and the rectilinear or the translation translation along the y direction for for the mass but this point will have the same acceleration for both the drum and the mass and as we know the acceleration if we take counterclockwise as positive is equal to alpha r which is the uh, tangential acceleration so this equation is going to be a which is equal to alpha multiplied by 0.4 now, if we solve all of these together, we will get the tension as 106 Newton. We will get the acceleration as 4.52 meter per second square. And we will get alpha as 11.3 radian per second square. There is another solution using the kinetic moment. And let me show you how do we do this. Well, as you see, this is the free body diagram and this is the kinetic diagram. And if we sum up the moment about point O and say that this is equal to all kinetic moments about O, then we will have the following. For the moment, the only force right here, this side is obtained from the free body diagram. So clearly, with respect to point O, the only force that causes uh, 
a moment is the weight of the of the of the block so on the left hand side we will have 20 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 0.4 now for the right hand side in the kinetic part definitely we will have i0 alpha causing a moment and we have the acceleration right here this one is an acceleration mass by acceleration is causing a kinetic moment and i want you to focus on how am i going to write this one because the first term is just i which is a 3.75 multiplied by alpha but the other part let me write it down and slowly the other part is this we have 20 which is the mass multiplied by the acceleration but we said that this acceleration is is the same as the acceleration of this point and this point with respect to the drum having an tangential acceleration so tangential acceleration is alpha r and for that you should have alpha and then r which is 0.4 but remember all of this is just like ma you still need to multiply it by the arm of the moment so you have to multiply again by 0.4 which is the arm and if you look clearly here the only unknown is alpha so solving for alpha will give you 11.3 radian per second square which is similar to the answer we obtained in the previous slide we have another example of an uh, unbalanced 50 pound flywheel uh, shown right here which has a radius of gyration uh, kg of 0.6 feet about an axis passing through it mass center g so looks g is here if a torque of 80 pound feet was applied and the angular velocity of the flywheel is 8 radian per second we want to determine the horizontal and the vertical components of the reaction acting at point o now let's draw the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram uh, but before we start uh, we should note that the center of rotation is not the same as the center of mass. They are shifted. And for that, the guidelines suggest that whenever we encounter such situation, then we should use normal tangential system. Here, we assume that the tangent axis downward is positive, while the normal axis to the left is positive. So if we draw the reaction right here, we will have O t and then we will have o n of course the torque has already been included over here so the only remaining force is the weight which is acting on the center of mass 50 pound now if we want to draw the kinetic diagram on the left hand side we should definitely have i g alpha which is already included we need to add the normal and the tangential acceleration. So the normal acceleration, we will assume that it is acting this way, which is equal to m omega square r g. And we will also assume that the tangential acceleration is acting downward, which is m alpha r g. Now, since we know the radius of gyration about the center of mass g, we can calculate i g as m k g square, which is equal to 50 pound divided by 32.2 feet per second square, that's the acceleration, uh, to get the mass. And then we multiply this by the radius of gyration 0.6 square and what we get is 
five nine slug feet square. Now, if we sum up the forces along the normal direction, we're taking left as positive. This is equal to the mass by the angular velocity rg. So what we get here is O n, which is equal to 50 divided by 32.2 multiplied by 8 square multiplied by 0.5 and this is going to give you 49.7 pound. So here the sum of all normal forces. So if you look at the free body diagram, we can see that ON is the only normal force. And this is supposed to be equal to the mass, which is 50 divided by 32.2, multiplied by omega, which is 8 square, multiplied by RG, which is 0.5 feet. Now we can now take the sum of all tangential forces which is equal to m alpha r g so for this we will have minus o t the reaction plus 50 which is the weight which is equal to again 50 divided by 32.2 multiplied by alpha multiplied by 0.5 and this is going to give you OT as 36.1 pound. Now, in order to calculate or de to determine the uh, angular acceleration alpha, we need to take the moment. So we take the moment about the center of gravity taking counterclockwise as positive and summing all the moment about g which is equal to i g alpha what we will get we get the tangential component right here causing a moment about g as well as the torque the normal force and the weight of the drum is or the flywheel passes through g so we don't make any moment so we will have o t multiplied by 0 0.5 plus 80 which is equal to 0 0.559 multiplied by alpha so solving for alpha will give you 111 radian per second square to summarize we have studied the kinetics of rigid bodies undergoing rotational motion and we have also discussed the selection of the reactions whether horizontal vertical or normal or tangential that's it thank you